In its last meeting of 2020, the Federal Reserve made it clear the easy money spigot will remain wide open into the foreseeable future. During his post-meeting press conference, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell seemed clueless about the ramifications of this policy, particularly the impact of inflation. The money supply grew by 37.08% year-on-year in November based on the True Money Supply Measure TMS. It was effectively the same rate of growth we saw in October and remains near September's all-time high rate of growth. The staggering growth in the money supply becomes more clear when you compare this year with last. TMS growth in November 2019 was just 5.9%. The TMS set all-time records eight straight months leading into October. September's record rate was 37.54%. October's year-on-year -year growth came in at 37.08%, the same as November's. While the TMS metric fell just shy of a ninth straight record month in October, the M2 growth rate did reach historic highs that month and then set another record in November. It grew 25.07% last month compared to October's record growth rate of 24.17%. And there is no sign that money creation is slowing down. According to Fed data released on December 18, M2 surged by $228.1 billion in the preceding week. In other words, the Fed created over $228 billion out of thin air in just one week. The True, or Rothbard Salerno Money Supply Measure TMS, is the metric developed by economists Murray Rothbard and Joseph Salerno, and is designed to provide a better measure of money supply fluctuations than M2. This measure of the money supply differs from M2 in that it includes treasury deposits at the Fed, and excludes short-time deposits, travelers' checks, and retail money funds. Historically, the growth in the money supply has never been higher with the 1970s being the only period that comes close. The M2 growth rate fell off considerably from late 2016 to late 2018 during the Federal Reserve's failed attempted to reverse the extraordinary monetary policy it launched during the Great Recession. M2 began growing again in 2019 when the Fed relaunched quantitative easing, although it refused to call it that. Since March, M2 has followed a trend similar to that of TMS, but to a lesser degree. Meanwhile, in the week reflected by the latest Federal Reserve data released last week, the central bank's balance sheet surged by $120 billion. It now stands at $7.363 trillion. It was the biggest increase in the balance sheet since May, the early days of QE Infinity. The Fed's assets are now up more than 600% from the period immediately preceding the 2008 financial crisis. The number of treasuries on the Fed balance sheet has doubled since the beginning of the year. Ryan McMakin at the Mises Institute provides some more insight into the numbers. In terms of total dollar amounts now extant, the overall M2 total money supply in November was $19 trillion and the TMS total was $19.3 trillion. Since January, this is an increase of $3.6 trillion in M2 and $5 trillion in the TMS. Moreover, for the past five months, the TMS total has done something new, it has grown to become larger than the M2 total. This is largely being fueled by the immense growth in U.S. Treasury deposits at the Fed, which are factored into TMS, but not M2. Treasury deposits ballooned from $375 billion in March to an unprecedented $1.7 trillion in July. By November, Treasury deposits had fallen slightly to $1.5 trillion, but remained near record-breaking levels. All of this money creation is starting to show up in the dollar index. That's not good news. The only reason the U.S. economy works is because of the overvalued dollar. The only reason the Fed has been able to get away with all the stimulus and the bailouts is because the world has made it possible by buying up all those dollars. But now that the world doesn't want those dollars, and is in fact starting to hemorrhage those dollars, this whole process is going to unravel. We're on a highway to hyperinflation. The US House of Representatives just passed a $900 billion stimulus package, and we are being promised that it will provide a real boost to the economy. Of course we were told the exact same thing about all of the other stimulus packages that have been passed since the beginning of the pandemic. Most importantly to many Americans, $600 stimulus payments will soon be sent out directly to the American people.
If you are married and have three kids, you will get a total of $3,000, because each member of your family is counted equally for this round of stimulus payments. But it won't just be US citizens that will be receiving free money. According to Michelle Hackman of the Wall Street Journal, families of illegal immigrants will now be eligible as well. Family members of unauthorized immigrants are now eligible to get stimulus checks under the $900 billion deal reached last night. That eligibility is retroactive, so adults excluded last time could get up to $1,800 now. In addition, there is a tremendous amount of pork in the spending package that the House just authorized. The following comes from Zero Hedge. And now, onto the pork, which includes billions to foreign countries, U.S. military weapons purchases which go above and beyond their budgets, $40 million for the Kennedy Center, and nearly $200 million so that federal HIV AIDS workers overseas can buy cars and car insurance, among other things. Not surprisingly, the bill passed the House by a vote of 359 to 53. I would like to applaud the 53 members of the House that tried to stand up and do the right thing, because this bill should have never been passed. It is being reported that the bill was 5,593 pages long, and our representatives were only given a few hours to read it. Several members of Congress are taking to social media to complain about the handful of hours they have to read the 5,593-page spending bill. Early Monday afternoon, the behemoth piece of legislation was uploaded, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi scheduled a vote for the evening. It is going to take weeks before we learn all of the insidious things that were snuck into this bill, because that is how long it is going to take for ordinary citizens to read it. As for members of Congress, I doubt that any of them will ever end up reading the entire thing. Our system of government is so broken, but most of the population doesn't seem to care. And most Americans also don't seem to care that all of this ridiculous spending is literally destroying the bright future that our children and our grandchildren were supposed to have. You see, the truth is that we don't have $900 billion to spend on a stimulus package. Instead, the federal government will have to borrow $900 billion new dollars that the Federal Reserve creates out of thin air. Needless to say, injecting $900 billion more dollars into the economy is going to be yet another massive shock for the money supply. Even without this new stimulus package, M2 has been rising at an exponential rate since the start of the pandemic due to all of the previous stimulus packages that Congress approved and all of the quantitative easing that the Federal Reserve has been doing. Prior to 2020, we had inflation, but now we have definitely entered a hyperinflationary phase. In the short term, $600 payments will help ease the economic suffering of tens of millions of Americans. But in the long run, we are going down the exact same path that Venezuela, Zimbabwe and the Weimar Republic went down. As I have explained to my regular viewers repeatedly, just about everyone in Venezuela is a millionaire today, but just about everyone is also living in poverty because their money is almost absolutely worthless. Unfortunately, most Americans are not interested in discussing the inflationary impact that all of this reckless spending is having. Instead, Social media is full of angry comments about how these $600 stimulus payments are not nearly large enough. Just check out what some of the people on Twitter are saying. Eli Uden, members of Congress got paid $130,000 to spend nine months arguing about whether we deserve $600. Robert Reich, people are starving and the GOP has the nerve to hand over a one-time $600 check, as the Pentagon spends $2 billion a day. The cruelty is staggering. They be, you and I, $600. No thank you. Sudan, $700 million. Hell no. At Blessusa 45, leader of both parties celebrating while laughing their asses off at us because they actually believe we are delighted to get our $600 check from them. At Marie 32318459, I am very proud of this deal, because we came together, bipartisan, this is unacceptable. Nine months, getting paycheck after paycheck with American tax dollars and then come up with this, spit in the face, $600 and they actually congratulating each other on this. Hash eat the rich. Allegedly legendary, at Speaker Pelosi Americans need monthly cash assistance for all, hash med for all and a real plan to get people back to work. Not a $600 dollar one-time check. You've given tax cuts in the billions and bailouts but don't help the American people. Hashtag stimulus checks or strike. 
This is one of the big problems that happens once you start cruising down the road to socialism. People always want more. And actually, Joe Biden is promising much more stimulus once he gets into the White House. Giving people free money is a fast way to win votes, but it is also going to destroy the value of our currency. If M2 continues to rise at an exponential rate, what do you think that is going to do to the cost of living in this country? We all know the answer to that question, and if our paychecks do not keep pace, that means that our standard of living will be going way down. I have been warning that our financial system is headed for an epic meltdown, and now it is starting to become a reality right in front of our eyes. Throughout human history, once currency devaluation reaches an exponential phase, things always have ended badly. And now it is our turn. We're on a highway to hyperinflation, and our maniacal free spending politicians are behind the wheel. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like, share, leave me a comment, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy, friends.